In this video, let's incorporate numerical solutions in determining the point of inflection of the hydrograph. Welcome to Hydrology. When we draw a hydrograph, there will always be two parts of the water. The one on top is the direct runoff, which we can use to run our water projects. And the one at the bottom is the base flow, which is the amount of water underneath the grid replenishing streams and rivers. How does variable slope method cut the base flow? Having a standard hydrograph, identify four important points. The first is the start of runoff, where the first extension is based. This extension ends at peak discharge. Now another extension happens from the end of runoff, and this extension ends until the point of inflection. After creating two more points of intersection, they are joined together with a third slope. Let us resolve the same example using variable slope method. First is to plot the points in the data set to the hydrograph. The hydrograph has time in the x-axis and the discharge or total flow in the y-axis. For this example, time is given in days and the discharge is in its standard unit of Qmax. Even just through the table, it is easily seen that day two has the highest total flow, which means this is the peak discharge. So after plotting the 14 points, note where the important points are located. The first is peak discharge is at T of two days with total flow of 34,300. The start of runoff is also nominated at T of one hour with flow of 2,340. It is although difficult to assign the end of runoff. That is why we are going to use the formula for N, which is 0 0.826 times the area of catchment raised to 0 0.2. This is then 0 0.826 multiplied by the area of 5,033 raised to 0 0.2. N is taken as 4.543. N is measured from peak discharge. So the end of runoff is located at day 6.543. Next is to compute for the ordinate at the end of runoff. Using the triangle at the interval between 6 and 7 days, work with similar triangles to solve for Y. Complete the vertical height of the big triangle by using the ordinates. Take 5,740 less 4,300, giving 1,440 for the vertical height. Plug these into similar triangles, saying y is to 0 0.457 day as 1,440 is to 1 day. y is then 658.08. After learning Y, take the base flow at that point by adding 4,300 with 658.08, giving 4,958.08. So the end of runoff is at day 6.543 with base flow of 4,958.08. To complete the separator, we also need to locate the inflection point apart from the start and end of runoff points. The inflection point is taken mathematically by zeroing out the second derivative. The second derivative can be computed if we know the equation of the curve. Thus, we will use interpolation to identify the equation of the curve. It is okay to include all the data points in the numerical solution. But since interpolation only used a few points, let's limit the points from day 1 to day 7 only. 
use Gregory-Newton forward interpolation in the determination of the function. The first thing to do with this method is to complete the difference table so we can identify the individual differences. The differences are done in table form until convergence. So the first difference, known as delta y, is just the difference of the two succeeding values. From this column, we have 31,960 from 34,300 minus 2,340, followed by the others as negative 9,300, negative 11,000, negative 5,040, negative 3,220, and negative 1,440. The following columns are subtracted just the same. So delta squared y has negative 41,260, negative 1,700, positive 5,960, 1,820, and 1,780. For the third difference, there are 39,560, 7,660, negative 4,140, and negative 40. The fourth difference has negative 31,900, negative 11,800, and 4,100. The fifth has 20,100 and 15,900. And lastly, the sixth difference has negative 4,200. With these values, what we are going to use in the best fit curve function are the forward differences, or the top values on each column. They are the ones in blue. There is a function for Gregory-Newton forward interpolation. But reviewing numerical solutions, you can also use Gregory-Newton backward interpolation. Having seven data points, the function is a little long, but this is simplified as 5 6 of 395,173x less 250,663x squared plus 59,753x cubed minus 1,627x raised to 4 minus 7x raised to 6 plus 147x raised to 5 minus 199,968. In order to take the inflection point, we should then take the first derivative of y, creating y prime as 5 6 of 395,173 less 2 times of 250,663x plus 3 times of 59,753x squared minus 4 times 1,627x cubed minus 42x raised to 5, plus 5 times 147x raised to 4, minus 0. Next is to take the second derivative, y double prime, which then makes the function 5 6 of 0, minus twice of 250,663, plus 6 times of 59,753x, minus 12, of 1,627x squared minus 5 times of 42x raised to 4 plus 20 times 147x cubed. After taking y double prime, have this equated to 0, which can also zero out the fraction 5, 6. So simplifying the equation, we have 0 as equated to negative 501,326 plus 358,518x, minus 19,524x squared, minus 210x raised to 4, plus 2,940x cubed. The next problem we have is to solve for x from the equation of 4th degree. What we needed is a positive root nearest the origin, so we then use newton raphson iteration. First is to look for the initial values. By assuming x of 1, the function yields negative 159,602. If x is assumed as 2, we get y as positive 157,774. So we have a sign jump. 
which means x is between 1 and 2. The most efficient iteration looking for a root of a curve is newton raphson So let's have a table with x, f of x, and f prime of x. f prime asks for another differentiation of the equation, although it is quite simple to take the derivative as the terms are separable, which is 358,518 minus twice of 19,524x minus 4 times of 210x cubed plus 3 times 2940x squared. So start by taking the mid value of the initial assumptions, that is half of 1 plus 2, which is 1.5. Plug 1.5 into the function of x, giving 1381.375. Also plug 1.5 into f prime, resulting to 316,956. After finishing the first iteration, take x by the previous x less f of x over f prime of x, and this gives 1.4956. Use this value into the function to have negative 13.4083 and f prime of x is 317,036.43. The third iteration shows the same x value of 1.4956, which shows convergence, so we take x of 1.4956 rounded off to 1.5. Next is to interpret x of 1.5 from the iteration. It means that from the start of the curve at day 1, at day 2.5, the point of inflection is located. So we can now extend the slope from end of runoff to this level of inflection point. If zoomed in, we can draw a triangle between days 6 and 7, which gives one day for x. The vertical height is then solved using the coordinates. Take the difference of 5740 and 4300, which is 1440. With similar triangles, we can extend the slope to the other side, where we can create a bigger triangle. The x distance is 3.5 from day 6 back to day 2.5, where the inflection point is located. Using ratio and proportion, we can then compute for y. From 1440 is to 1, as y is to 3.5. y is then computed as 5040. So the base flow of the inflection point is solved as 5740 plus 5040, which is 10780. Using the big triangle, let us work on the different daily base flows. So the increment per day taken from similar triangles is 1440 is to 1 as y is to 1, which gives y as 1440. The base flow at day 3 is then 5780 plus 3 times of 1440, which is 10,060. Base flow on day 4 is 5,740 plus twice of 1,440, giving 8,620. Then base flow on day 5 is 5,740 plus 1,440, resulting to 7,180. We are ready to tabulate the base flow values per day. So day 1 has 2,340, and also on day 2. Day 3 has base flow of 10,060, and day 4 with 8,620. Day 5 has 7,180. The rest of the curve has total flow considered as base flow. Next is to add another column for direct runoff, where day 1 as 0 dr. Day 2 has 34,300 minus 2,340, giving 31,960. Day 3 has 14,940 from 25,000 minus 10,060. Day 4 
with 14,000 less 8,620 or 5,380. Then day 5 has 8,960 minus 7,180, which is simplified as 1,780. From day 6 to 14, base flow is taken as total flow, zeroing out direct runoff. To solve for the volume of direct runoff, we take the area of the hydrograph. The volume can be broken down to different intervals, first of which is the area from the start of runoff to the peak discharge, which is somehow a triangle. So area 1 is half of base times height, or half of one day times height of dr, which is 31,960 cubic meters per second. Use the conversion factors of 24 hours per day and 3,600 seconds per hour. Per days, hours, and seconds cancel out. So the first area is 1.3807 megacubic meters. The next area estimated is between day 2 to 3, where it is observed that the area is somehow a trapezoid. So the area we consider is half of h times the summation of two parallel bases. That is one day over two multiplied by the two drs of 31,960 and 14,940, which is simplified as 23,450 cubic meters day per second. Now multiply the conversion factor of 24 hours per day and 3,600 seconds per hour, canceling out these units out. The second area is then computed as 2.02608 mega cubic meters. To complete the volume of direct runoff, take the last area in the hydrograph from day 3 to day 6. The area is somehow a triangle with area of half of base times height, or half of 3 days times 14,940 cumex. Attach the conversion factors where the third area is then computed as 1.93622 mega cubic meters. The total volume of direct runoff is then the summation of these three areas, which turns out as 5.343 mega cubic meters.